This channel is supported by Truefire. Truefire is an online library of lessons from some of my favorite players. There's thousands of lessons on there. You can use the promo code JNC40 to get 40% off of any of their courses. Right, I guess this is a topic that probably has been covered a bunch of times by other people, but in case you wanted to hear it covered by me, 
Uh, this is a question that I have been asked before. Um, and it's around the idea of memorizing uh, jazz tunes. I guess there's a, a question whether you need to do this or not. I've been on gigs with people um, where they were just reading from sheet music and they kind of like would say, you, why would you bother to learn these tunes? We could just read it. And I think there is a, a bit of a difference, um, especially when you're playing something like a guitar where there's a lot of different ways to play something and I think it's the difference between kind of like a surface level understanding and maybe a bit of a deeper understanding. For me, I've always felt like um, by the time I've got a tune memorized, I'm much more likely to play something interesting over it, much more connected to what the actual tune sounds like, much more connected to my own playing and also then able to get out of my own head instead of just looking at, uh, you know, a real book or something like that. So it's not to say there's no value in uh, reading music and learning it from a real book or whatever. It's just that I think there are real benefits to memorising this stuff, um, particularly for me, that I can come back to certain tunes, you know, maybe a year. I think it was 2022 when I last played this tune kind of properly, uh, according to the projects on here, um, and still sort of remember it and, and stuff like that. So I wanted to talk about personally how I memorized some of this stuff. So the, the first thing is that um, I think you should listen to a few versions of the tune and maybe find one that you connect to most of all. Um, because for me, I've always, this is with any music really, um, the stuff that I can play confidently is stuff that I can sort of hear in the back of my head um, playing. And basically, if it's any simple pop tune stuff like that I can pretty much play it without having to learn it or whatever because uh, I have this thing where you know I can hear that chords are called one three four five six all that sort of stuff and then sort of just jump between them so having a good kind of record player in the back of your head so that you're not going okay well what was that what was that and um, where does it go here so you're not trying to not only remember how to execute it, but what needs to be executed at all. Uh, basically, you, you're, the record player in the back of your head should kind of keep track of things. And especially for when you're soloing over things, it's good to sort of maybe in, in your head sort of have something singing the melody through. So find a version you like. This for me oftentimes might be Chet Baker, Peggy Lee, or for this particular tune, it's Nils Langren, uh, a, a trombone player right um, but his version of my foolish heart was one that I connected with quite early on um, so that's kind of number one listen a lot and maybe active listening as well part two if you're going to use uh, the real book or sheet music and stuff like that that's fine but you might also want to write out your own version of it because in the the exercise of actually physically writing I think there is something that can help you and that kind of processes things slightly differently yeah for me I found that to be the case like even if you just write it out uh, I've done that in you know pop gigs and stuff like that I never need to necessarily refer to those notes but actually writing them out in general can kind of help uh, I think another kind of idea is to take a, a wider view of stuff so uh, you might notice that a tune is basically made up of structural things so it might be like an AABA -A -A form uh, in which case you hold that in your head as well is, is what I would try to do. So um, instead of like meticulously thinking, right, well, this bar does this and this does this, take a, a larger kind of overview and go, right, okay, well, that's the A section, that's the B section, and then it repeats the A section again. And notice repetition, um, notice bits and pieces like that. As well, talking about taking this wider overview, instead of... Um, for me, thinking about each and every chord that goes by, I try to track like the harmonic movements and the tonal centers. This is a thing for me. So in the context of this tune, I'm thinking we're in A for a lot of it. Two. Then we're jumping away to a two five in D flat major. Then we're on chord three, chord six, chord two, chord 
five. So I'm I'm noticing for when we're jumping outside of the key more than necessarily sort of every single chord. So So that's all pretty much in A. We jumped away from A to D flat, back to A. So yeah, notice when you're getting away from a home key and back, uh, uh, that's something more of this kind of wider view that you're taking rather than each and every chord. And I guess the way you might do that is to write out your changes and then sort of group them above and say, well, that's a 2-5-1 in A, we're going to chord 3 of A, um, and then we're going to 2-5 in D flat. Do you get what I mean on that? Another thing that I think could be really useful is... Uh, and this is kind of part of the listening exercise as well, is learning the lyrics, um, because that can help to, I think, make it a little bit clearer where the melody is, especially in a world where some players like Bill Evans and uh, certainly guitarists with chord melody stuff, they, they can kind of get quite far away from what the original tune sounds like potentially. Um, and so connecting with a singer's voice on it actually, I think, can help. Uh, and also it helps to solidify the tune in your head a little bit. And so if I can actually remember what the lyrics are as I'm playing, I'm more likely to hang the, the rhythm off of it correctly. Or, you know, yeah, correctly, I guess. Or closer to, to what I expect. Uh, and not get, like, lost in the thing. Uh, I think if you're doing, uh, reading it off a page that I like to do, particularly if it was something like Donna Lee, where I could kind of read it and learn it from that, but I would then rely on it, um, is to take a sheet of paper and sort of block off one bar at a time. So you start with just one bar maybe that's getting blocked off and you move that through the music so that for a second or for a bar or for however long, you get to rely on your own memory and muscle memory and create that. use to show off the merch I guess and start to gradually break your reliance on the sheet of music by yeah literally just take something physical you could even take I don't know a mug and chuck it on top of your iPad I don't know don't don't do that do something sensible but literally just physically block off what you're reading for a bar at a time move that bar around and that can help you to to break that kind of reliance thing um, and also I guess another thing you could do is start uh, on like bar three or four, particularly if you're playing something like Donna Lee or something like that, where it's, um, you know, a lot of notes that can be one way to, to help break that idea. Ultimately, what it comes down to me, the things that I remember the most are the ones where I have a favorite version that I've listened to a lot of times, ones that I've spent a lot of time kind of creating a chord melody, that kind of thing really helps. Ones that I've tried running arpeggios through the whole tune a few times, that can really help. Uh, ones where I know the lyrics. Um, and most of all, the ones where I've done the most reps. So, you know, players like Jonathan Kreisberg, uh, all our favourite players, they might not know every single standard ever, but the ones that they do regularly call in, in scenarios, they've probably played in loads and loads and loads of different scenarios, loads of different ways. And, you know, so their understanding of a tune like All The Things You Are, they've probably played it so many times and in so many different contexts uh, that it kind of just becomes this thing. Uh, and there are a few tunes like that for me where I know them really well. Uh, you know, things, simple things like Autumn Leaves, which I could, you know, probably play in most keys without too much difficulty. It's the tunes that you put in the most reps with that you get the most results out of, I think. Um, and yeah, so the tunes where I've really gone into detail and tried to put together an arrangement that I liked or the tunes that I really, really liked most of all, 
Um, those are the ones that sit best in my head. Tunes that I've only played for like one week at a time. Um, you know, some of the complex stuff. They don't sit so much. Or tunes that I didn't continue to listen to. The standards that didn't connect. Those I, I don't necessarily get in the same way. So what I would do for those is that I would spend some time just going back to that listening phase. And, you know, sit with the guitar. Try and remember what the melody was then start to hang the chords off and it's just a it'd be a bit quicker than the first time round, but it's a refreshing process if you get what I mean. If you've got your own strategies for learning jazz tunes, those are the ones that I used. Um and yeah, try and for me personally, if I know that I need to memorize the tune, um uh, I would stay away from the, the paperwork to start off with so that I'm doing more of the, the work to build an oral kind of picture of the tune or you know an oral kind of plan of it so it plays in the back of my head and I don't have to remember how the melody went I can so it's just singing in the back of my head kind of like a illness cheers for stopping by uh if you want the tab for that it'll be up on my patreon my foolish heart the chord melody and the backing track um I hope this was helpful to one or two of you maybe